backward and get this show on the road. So for those of you that don't know me, oh, why are you doing that, Jay? For those of you that don't know me, never had me before, uh, call me Jay. I'm not smart enough or weird enough to have a doctor degree, so don't call me that. Um, John's my first name, but no one calls me that. And I'm just, I don't know, fairly-ish normal guy. I don't know. Um, teach high school for my full-time job. Just last year, I went full-time auto shop instead of math and physics. I've been doing that for 20-some years now, and so I went over to something different, which is a lot of fun. It's a lot of more applied, um, not just physics, but math, a little bit of everything. It's kind of neat, and get to get into electricity a lot more with the kids, and you get to talk, talk to and work around kids that are different, and uh, a different group of people. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, school just technically got out a couple weeks ago, but when kids left I had like seven big projects to finish by myself so I'm on the last one is just about done thank god I'm not tired of fooling with that thing so um yeah getting excited for summer to be here finally so um that's kind of me just whatever this class is a lot of fun I think for most people it's for those of you who have never um or like you just have uh what I want to say you've had um you know you think calculus and statistics and stuff like that's your only math stuff. Then when you come into this class, it looks a lot different. And um, it's a lot of fun, though. It's a little different story. So uh, I pulled this up. We'll be using Excel um, quite a bit in this class or Google Sheets, either one. They both work just fine. Um, so the things we'll be looking at in this class, we'll be talking about sets a little bit, um, sets and set theory. Uh, it's not my favorite thing in the world that part is in it's a little dry um, but it has a lot of different uh, connections to other different kinds of math so if you look at just set theory by itself it's kind of dry and boring but try to remember there's more to it than that uh, we'll talk about some relations uh, and we'll talk about that i'll talk about a little bit of number theory and we'll do some proofs about integers and things like that just some very simple proofs um, that's supposed to be part of this curriculum and then um, we'll look at some sequences and series and we'll use some graph theory. And then, oh, I need to back up. Uh, and back up to the, um, to set the, uh, the uh, some, some, some of the set theory business and some of the relations. We're also gonna look at some coding as well. So things like UPC codes, um, ISBN numbers, the bin numbers, and a variety of other ones we're gonna look at, kind of look at the math behind them, how they work. Um, we'll look at a couple of very, one very, very, very simple um, error correcting code. Um, those codes all form the basis for a lot of what we do communication wise anymore. So like if, if you type in the UPC number wrong, the computer will beep at you. Um, you'll go back and see what you did wrong. That's nice. That's called error detecting code. Same thing if a VIN number, if you type in the VIN number wrong, they say no such car exists. Um, and so that's important to know that the computer can see, can catch your error. It happens a lot. Um, the most common errors are transpositional errors when you get two numbers backwards. And so there are codes that will be able to catch that, codes that'll do other things. We're gonna talk about how that works and the math behind it. And then we're also, as I say, gonna look at a very, 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 very simplistic uh, error uh, correcting code, which will actually find and correct an error behind the scenes. Okay. And so, how we take data, um, for instance, what I'm talking right now, the computer takes it in, converts it to binary, obviously, shifts it across the signal, across the airwaves uh, in a binary format. Uh, it, of course, then will be taken down, re separated back out, and then you'll hear me yammering on the other end there can always be uh, errors in that mess. And so the computer has, works on different codes. And of course, we're not gonna get into those, but we're gonna look at some of the background for how that works. So that when you're listening to me, you're happily ignorant that there was ever a mistake, made by the computer that is. And, and so the computer will just automatically catch it and fix it. And you're happily ignorant that it ever happened. That's kind of some of the math we're gonna be looking at. Some of the graph theory stuff, we're gonna be looking at uh, some logistics, um, things that we do in our daily lives, but then how does that take off if you're going to work for UPS or um, if you're going to work for you know FedEx or if you're going to work for the post office or you know the, the street sweeper or whoever? Uh, how how would that work for you? And then also some scheduling algorithms. We're going to look at that a little bit too, and talk about how we can uh, 
how we can and use these different kinds of mathematics. And we already kind of do it. It's just uh, some of us are better at than others. Um, some people obviously are really good at scheduling their time. Somehow they have a built-in a built-in way of doing that. I think some of us obviously are, have strengths in one thing or another. Um, some of us are better at that. Some of us are better at other things. And so we're going to talk about some algorithms that have come about over the years. That's something else that you're going to see a lot of in this class. There's going to be some actual you know, theorems, some actual this is a fact always. And then there's going to be some algorithms. Uh, remember, an algorithm is just, if you will, a mathematical recipe. If you Google uh, lemon meringue pie, you'll get 10 million hits on uh, recipes for that. You trim the old mustache, it's starting to drive me nuts. Um, and so you look that up, you're like, oh, cool, you know, we've got uh, 10 million recipes. What do you get when you make the recipe? It's a lemon meringue pie. Uh, is it a little, a little different than this one? Mm -hmm. Is it the best? Uh, so sometimes this one will give you the best answer. Sometimes this one will give you the best answer. None of them are perfect. If they were, there'd be no reason to teach all of them. And so that's going to be something that for some people is going to offend you, maybe bother you a little bit that, um, that, you know, it's not perfect every time. So just be aware of that. As I'm standing here staring at my syllabus, by the way, I see my phone number is incorrect. I'm going to update that for you. Uh, it's a message number, so you can call and leave a message if you need to. Sorry, I didn't mean to change the subject, but it's bothering me. Uh, that's what we're we'll doing. Uh, as far as the video, as far as the class goes, I'm planning on one hour on Wednesdays from one to two. And then on Fridays, I'm going to have a office hour time. I think I'll probably send it out later today, what, what time it will be. And like, it'll be like maybe a couple hours stretch on there where I can be available, but you're going to need to email me ahead of time um because i'm not going to sit here like i did last term and just sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and no one shows up so summertime i don't really want to be doing that very bad um so if you tell me you're coming i will make sure that i'm aware of, of being ready to go for you and then i'll send out a zoom link for the for the office hours i also send out a new zoom link every week for the class um it just makes it way easier if i do that um Last time I tried to reuse the same one and I, I was having issues with it. So that's probably what I'll do. Um, there will be a project for this class. Uh, there'll be some more details that come along about that later as we go along. Uh, it's somewhat open-ended. Um, there's a cut, well, what I give you is a couple of prompts and then you can kind of go this way or that way um, and then work it out. Um, homework, of course, there will be two exams. Of course, they're take-home exams. Obviously, you're doing them at your house. Um, they will be timed, however. Okay, so there'll be two-hour exams from one to three, and then you'll have another half an hour to upload them, the pictures, that is. And um, and we'll have a, like a Dropbox on each of those days that'll show up. Ditto with the homework. The, your class is the only class that I'm not far ahead in at this point. Um, that's because even though I teach this class every summer, I don't have hardly, I have hardly any videos for this class uh, stocked up. And so I'm having to shoot all of those as I go and quickly get them up there ahead of time. Well, not ahead of time. Ahead of before you need them, I'll put it that way, but not like way ahead of time. So that's, that's kind of where we're going. There'll be another video that shows up probably tomorrow. So it'll be two videos this week and then next week. And so on, I'll be populating quickly as we go along. Um, my hope is by the end of next week, I'm 100% done with all my videos and the, the whole term is pretty much done and online ready to go by the end of next week. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards uh, just because I don't want to sit here and keep making it up as I go along each time. My Wednesday classes, I'm going to try to make them a lot more of the whys instead of the hows, although there will be some hows as well. So like, why are we doing this? You know, what's the point? Um, what can we learn from this? Pardon me, the neighbor kids are loud. I got the same. We'll try to be a little more, um, a little more about the why than, and and the, or the the why and the hows is uh, well, the whys and the what fors as opposed to the hows on um, Wednesday. I think um, for the most part. Now, that's not to say I won't do some of the hows and working out problems and stuff. And you're certainly welcome to ask questions. And then Friday, I'll do the uh, as I say the office hour time. You can come and ask for help on that deal. Um, this is kind of how everything kind of plays out. There will be quizzes every week, um, or at least every week. I, 
And my plan is for every week, I'll have a quiz right now. That's my plan. And again, those should be showing up pretty soon as well. For this class, based on how it works out, some of them will be a short, it'll be like one question. It'll be worth, you know, 10 points, let's say. In the other weeks, it'll maybe be three questions because they're smaller things. Uh, this week in particular, um, there could be one about, uh, let's say, a Hamiltonian circuit or something. And finding a Hamiltonian circuit and drawing it out, and sending it back, that's like a three minute deal, piece of cake, no problem. Um, but there could be some where you have to do a proof or something. I'm not going to give you a zillion of those to do in a quiz. So just kind of, it'll depend and I'll weight them accordingly. Um, so this is, so again, homework quizzes project and then the two exams. And then down here, here's what we're going to be covering. So this week, it's gonna be all about graph theory. Um, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy graph theory a lot. Um, had never really gotten into it, to be honest with you, until mm, maybe six, seven years ago. Um, and then when I really started studying it for a class, I had to teach at PCC, which is a lower level version of kind of what I'm doing here, but it's a lower level version of it. Um, kind of really got into it more. Uh, I remember the first time I saw one of those problems when I was in college, I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Matter of fact, you'll see that in the video that's up right now. Um, because of the way it was presented, it's like, oh, here's this town. It's got a couple of islands. Can you walk across all the bridges? Well, who cares? And, but that's not the point of it. That, the point of it was to, but I think it did a lousy job of kind of motivating it. Um, but if once you motivate the lesson, you realize, hey, this this is how this could be used in my daily life. Well, then I think there's pretty cool stuff out there for that. Uh, we'll look at some scheduling as well. Um, so directed graphs and, and Gantt charts, we'll be looking at that. Uh, this is a tentative schedule, a tentative, and I mean to stick to the tentative portion of that. There can be a situation where I may, especially with this online thing, I may push some of it back out a little ways and then catch up on some other stuff later on. Um, for instance, the codes. And then you notice I left myself the whole last week TBA. Um, we will do some final review, of course. But I left myself a little room here specifically because I didn't know how all this is gonna shake out, okay? So I, I will keep it, um, you know, try to keep on schedule as best I can, but there could be a situation where you know, I might fall behind. I'm leaning towards pushing some of the isomorphisms in the trees back to next week, just so you know, um, but not not the end of the world. Uh, homework, I'm going to have it due uh, in every two weeks. There's going to be a homework due date, if you will, upload folder. Um, I think the first one is going, to, is going to be due July 12th. So that pushes this out basically three weeks that you have to work on the first two weeks worth of homework. And then and then, every, then it'll be every week or so after that. So it just kind of gives you more time to work on the first two sets of homework, I guess. Um, those aren't up yet. What they will be is a Dropbox. It'll have listed the homework problems. Again, that'll be up later this afternoon. And it'll have the deadlines in there right now. The homework is listed down here at the bottom of the page, right there. But I'm gonna put those guys on um, in the Dropbox itself, all those numbers. So you can just go to one, so have a one-stop shopping place there. When you're doing your homework, take a picture of it and then upload those pictures to the Dropbox um, by the due date. And that's kind of how that game will be played. Um, you will see there will be some other assignments like there's a quiz where there's a VIN code worksheet thing. We'll look at that later on. There'll be a scheduling assignment right here. And some of those, those will be separate standalone deals. And so when the time comes for those, you'll see them pop up. Um, probably on their own Dropboxes is where they'll be located. And uh, we'll kind of go that way. <laughs> anyway, questions, comments, concerns. Um, I would say that the the logic piece is one that I'm going to give kind of short shift to. Um, it's just not my. It's not. It's not number one. It's not my big thing. Uh, number two, if you're going into programming and stuff, you're going to see a lot more logic later on. I've number got a question. Three, I think that's one that. Yeah, just that. That is one that I think, for the most part, if you made this far in life, you've seen it where you need to apply it. We'll hit it, but we're not gonna spend a ton of time on it. Yeah. Um, when I click the syllabus in Canvas, it says unauthorized. <laughs> so I don't know if it's officially posted or not. Oh, who knows? I'm I don't know. Tired I, can't of Canvas. <laughs> I can't see it. 
I don't know if who anyone else is, else is having that problem. Who else is sick of Canvas yet? All right, let's try this. Click on here. Nope, wrong. No, see, look at it. Now I opened the wrong one. Just a minute. Oh, I didn't publish it or something stupid. Edit. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see it. Can't see it moving away. Um, yep, there's that. Update. Update. Show course. Syllabus. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it says it's published, I guess. Hmm. Well, how about, um, yeah, maybe I email it to you. Or I guess, I here, I'll do this. Here, I'll fix it. We'll just put it under, I'll put it under the, uh, yeah, right there. No, oh, right there, dummy. There we go. Now I put it under math, I put it under week one. So at least you can see it. I'll try to figure out what else is going on. Does that work for you? Yep, I see it now. All right. Thank well, you. As long, as long as we can see it, we'll work around it. Any other questions on the syllabus there at all? Are the quizzes timed? Um, uh, I'll probably have like an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, no, I'll probably like an hour limit on them, yeah. So, but whenever okay. you want to do them. Okay. So not like in a certain, like you must do it between here and here. Sounds good. Let's go. All righty then. So the other thing I was going to do today is bring up on this silly thing. Co-host, share screen. <gasps> I did hit record, didn't I? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Share screen. And here we are. So um, I'm gonna do some more with this this week. Uh, another be another video as I say hits tomorrow. Uh, but about scheduling. And so in graph theory, and if you've watched the first video, you realize that the concept of a graph that we're talking about with graph theory is something like this. You might think of them as a network, and you you would be correct. So hey, this is how social networks work. That's right, it is. It's also how pretty much everything we do in our lives is connected this kind of way. You'll see loops, things like this. You know, so if it's picking up garbage on the street, if it's delivering via UPS, whatever it happens to be, if it's you out running errands, that's great. But another kind of graph that we're gonna look at is the kind of graph that goes more like this. That is, uh, when you get up in the morning, it kind of predate, predates everything else, okay? Obviously it has to happen first. And after that, you can, um, I don't know, the bathroom, some people are like very, very, very distinct in what must be done first. I must do this first, and then I must, and then I must. Other people realize that there's no reason why you couldn't make coffee first, okay? The only thing that really predates, or that is, that has to be done before, which we call as precedence, has to be done before getting making coffee, is you have to get out of bed. It's kind of hard to make coffee without getting out of bed, okay? Uh, to drink coffee, of course, you'd have to have made coffee. Uh, so then, you know, you drink coffee and so forth. Obviously, at some point, there's going to be shower in here. Now, shower, you may always say, listen, I had to get into the bathroom first and I had to have my coffee first before I shower. And I would agree in maybe. And some of you are like, dude, you could ha literally have a shower first before you make coffee or anything else. Okay, if that's how you feel about it, then that's possibly true. Um, I think there are some things that are clearly non-negotiable. It's really hard to put your underwear on before or after you put your pants on. That's very tricky to do. Um, however, putting socks on before or after pants is is legitimate way of doing things. Uh, and we hadn't been married very long. I remember putting my pants. I, I remember seeing that put my socks on one day, and she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Put my socks on." She goes, "After your pants?" I'm like, "Yes, the way the good Lord intended it." And she's laughed at me and she's like, no, you have to. And I'm like, no, you really don't. So there'll be some things that are negotiable, obviously, some things that are not negotiable. 
Uh, each one of these things is a task, okay? Um, obviously, the, each one of them will have a certain time component, constraint to it. So how long does it take to get up? You might think that getting up doesn't take any time at all, and I, would, I wouldn't disagree with that. Going to the bathroom might be a two-minute procedure for you. Making coffee might be three minutes and so forth. And on down the line. And then when you're all done, the total job is the collection of all the tasks. Okay. And you could think of this when you're programming as well. There are different objects that must be done, different subroutines, whatever you want to look at it as. I mean, it depends on how you call it, what kind of language you're using. Some things obviously have to get done before other things, but together they form the whole program. You can think of it kind of like that. And you can talk about, you know, if it's just me doing the job, I'm one processor. And so my total time is just the sum of all the times. Okay. And so then we're going to look at, okay, well, what if you're doing something else? What if it's, um, what if it's uh, doing chores around the house? And so, for instance, you're going to rake leaves. You're going to mow the lawn and you're going to weed the flower bed and you're going to wash windows and you're going to, I don't know, clean gutters. Okay. If you think about that, all right, so raking leaves might take you an hour, mowing the lawn might take you a half hour, I don't know, weeding the flower beds, I don't know two hours, sure. Washing the windows, I don't know, an hour and a half. Cleaning the gutters might take you a half hour, I don't know. Okay. Which of these things has to be done first? Well, if you're like most people, I think most people, um, like I wanna get every, I wanna have like the flower bed weeded and I want the rakes, the ra leaves raked. I want that done before I mow the lawn because I think it looks tacky to throw just garbage or drop any garbage on my freshly manicured lawn. It drives me crazy. So I think for me personally, I would have, if these were my tasks, and these are my times for each of those tasks, over here I might have a column of precedence. And so for raking leaves, I don't think there would be a precedent. I, think, I don't think there would be one, but for mowing the lawn, raking, and weeding would be my two precedents. And then I don't, I'm not sure that there would be one for the flower bed, weeding the flower bed. Some people might say gutters because you're gonna drop stuff in the flower beds, but you know, whatever. I would argue that gutters, I want to get the gutters clean before I wash the windows because I, I don't um, I don't want to drop a bunch of garbage on my freshly clean windows. I find that would find that obnoxious. If I'm doing this all by myself, there's three, five, six and a half hours worth of work there. Okay. If I'm, this is the total, what we call total processing time. Okay. Um, this is a situation where clearly two of us could do it. If we had two processors. Okay. In this, in our, in the case of what we're doing here, we're not going to be able to work on the jobs together. Um, that gets really ugly math wise. So we're going to keep it as one person does one job at a time. Then the other person does another job. Clearly there's math that exists to do that, but we're not going to get into it in this class. So what we're going to look at is the idea of, you know, Hey, two processors in a perfect world, we each do three and a quarter. It doesn't work that way because of the fact that in this situation, obviously we cannot, we, we're not allowing us to work on, we only have one rake. We have one lawnmower. And, Apparently, we only have one person that can weed the flower bed and whatever. Okay, we have one squeegee. So only one person can do everything at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, first of all, making a graph that fits this scenario. So we can jump in at any one of three places. We could jump in at raking leaves because it had no pre it had no precedent. And I like to write one hour inside there that reminds me of how long it takes. I'm also going to put weeding here for two hours, goodness sakes. And I'm gonna put um, gutters for a half, okay? Now, that's what had to be done. Then windows washing, it comes out to here, wash windows, because the precedent goes this direction. So that's one and a half. And then weeding, 
uh, go and weeding and raking both go to mowing the lawn. And that lasted for a half hour, right? And then together, these guys might come into a, well, once you're done with both of them, you, you can get to finish. You could say a variety of things. It could be a situation where you, you know, feel good about yourself. This is an untimed event in this case. It just allows me to see that we've come to a pinnacle. We're done. Everything falls out of this thing, okay? It's pretty clear the way this is set up that we have a variety of things we could jump in at. But if it's me, personally, if I'm setting this up, if we have uh, CJ and Jody, sure, okay? Where do you want Jay to start? Well, maybe Jay's gonna start with the two hour block of time. This is two hours and this is weeding, okay? Well, what's Jody gonna do? Well, she can't jump in at mowing or washing, but she can jump in at raking, so maybe we'll have her do raking first. Cool. For an hour? She gets done with that, what can she do? Oh, well, she can't really do much. Oh wait, yeah, she could still do gutters, okay? Gutters, cool. So then what's next on her list? Well, then the next on the list, though, can, what can be done? Well, she can't mow yet, because I'm not done. Can she wash windows? Yeah, she could wash windows for an hour and a half. That puts her at a total distance of one, one and a half. This puts her at three total time here, okay? So wash, and then when Jay finishes, look at that, two, and he gets a half an hour of mowing. And then what do I do? I sit on my butt, so I'm idle, if you will, okay? This concept of what I just drawn out for you is what's referred to as a Gantt chart. We'll be looking at those a little bit later in the next video, that's what's gonna be coming out. It's a quite straightforward process in terms of, hey, look, we've got all this stuff to do. This is just a scheduling event. As a matter of fact, if you ever go to the doctors or the dentist and you look over the secretary's shoulder there and she grabs a block and she takes this block and she just drags it onto someone's schedule. For instance, the other day I got my teeth appointment, my tooth appointment figured out again and I watched her drag it down there onto Janae's, my hygienist's thing, and she just dropped me on there at eight o'clock in the morning. And it was just, you know, it was a one hour chunk of time and she was able to just drop it in there. Notice that. In the case of my dental appointment lady, um, Janae, she did my teeth, she's doing my teeth at eight o'clock, she's doing somebody else's at nine o'clock and so on and so on and so on. There are no real precedents there. If I canceled on them or she got sick and canceled me or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the nine o'clock one at all, okay? However, if you're working on a car, say you're working on a car and you order a part, the part doesn't show up and whatever part it is you're working on, it, everything else depends on that part everything comes to a screeching halt because there's a dependency there, okay? I'd like to keep going, but I need this part before I can do this. I need this done before I can do that. And there's this idea of dependency. Clearly in the case of my dentist or the doctors and whatever, um, it, each individual person's one is independent when you first put them on the schedule. Now, if I have a bad, bad, you know, nasty teeth thing, and at the end of an hour, she's still going strong, and two hours later, she's still going strong, then all of a sudden, then yeah, it screws her whole schedule up for the rest of the day. That's a totally different scenario. But in terms of when they go to schedule us on there, then it then it's clearly where each one of us is independent. None of us depends on the other one, okay? Uh, we're gonna spend quite a bit of time talking about scheduling. I, I find it very fun. There was no real rhyme or reason why I made myself weed as opposed to having uh, Jody weed. Um, it's quite possible that Jody should have, could have just done this first and then this. Um, the idea being is I'd like this total amount of time it took us both to do the job, which turns out was three hours was the finishing time. I would like this finishing time to be as small as possible. I would really like that to be as, as small a time as possible. So we get it over with, okay? Again, picture this as something that's displeasurable, you know, whatever it happens to be, it's not something you enjoy doing, like I'm gonna go fishing and I, I want this to get over. No, no, said no one ever, okay? It's something that's like, I gotta mow the freaking yard. Well, let's see how fast we can do it, okay? Um, I will be showing you a way I do these in Excel. Uh, I used to use this uh, program for Google, but you know, as things typically go, it starts off nice and, and uh, it's a pretty neat program. It started off nice and free and everything, and then they locked it all down. 
it's it's actually quite a bit better now but you have to like buy it now and I, it's just too much work for me so i just use excel for it uh if i was using a business i would definitely use you would use gantt charts all the time uh not only booking out when the crews are working where they're going also where your equipment is okay so they're they're redoing the street outside my house right now and uh they have a couple of steamrollers here and a pavement machine was here for a few days and now it's gone but they've got several front loaders and you'd want to have all of that scheduled out where it is so that you know like okay where's that at? well it's on this job okay now we got to get over to this other job and the idea being is you're keeping track of where the processors are and seeing how you know how it's getting done the example of this street in front of my house though it's about a mile and a half two mile stretch of, con of pavement that they've been working on for I think 11 months now, it's kind of embarrassing that it's taken them this long. I think I could just about dug it up my hand a little faster, but whatever. They're knock on wood, they'll be done today, I think, but it's been taking its sweet time. So we're going to look at this, and we're also going to look at a way of doing this that has a little bit more than, I think I'm going to do this one first, okay? Or I think I'm going to do that one first, just as I feel like it, okay? So some of us, when you were given a choice, you picked the grossest, Hardest, longest, most objectionable, task first, okay? That is who I am. If you ask me to do something, I'm going to pick the nastiest thing first and get it out of the way. Why? Because I know it's all downhill from there. That's just how I think. Other people pick the easy ones first. Why? Because you knocked out five or 10 things quickly and you feel like you, yay, I'm a, I'm a success, woohoo! Even though in your mind, you know the nastiest thing you're saving for last. Mm. These are two different methods of going about things. They're stuff that we see every day. They just happen to have names. This first guy here is the, what we call the decreasing time. And we're gonna, be, when we say gross is longest, we mean really the longest task, okay, is what we're gonna be messing with in this case in particular. We wanna minimize time always. So this is called the decreasing time algorithm. And the idea will be that, hey, when you jump into one of these guys, uh, you have a choice. Let's pick, let's get the longest one done first. And we'll just, whenever we're given a choice, I need to pick something off my list. All right, I have, let's say, three things I can do right now. Everything, there's nothing standing in my way of doing them. Which one do I pick? I'm always going to pick the longest one next. Okay. Some people prefer to do what's called the increasing time algorithm. That is, whenever I'm given a choice, I have two options. I can do this one or that one. Which one am I going to take? I'm going to pick the one that is the shortest and then go that way. Okay. And those are just two ways, and they're called algorithms because, again, they're not. They are not uh, theorems, they don't always work. Sometimes they give you the best, sometimes they do not give you the best. Uh, by the way, rarely would you find, like off, oftentimes there are thousands of possible combinations. It would be rare that you ever picked the worst one, okay? It's also rare that just either one of these would get you the best one and a very small, unless it's a very small, like five or 10, maybe 15 even task this these two would not necessarily give you the best and another one we'll look at and this is my favorite one and it's one that for the most part if you've done any planning ever it's called the critical path algorithm and this is the idea that you there is something some task is going to hold you up at some point so get its precedence so get it done first so get it done as soon as possible which of course means which means do all his precedence first Okay, and so there's going to be a it's, it's a little more to it than that, but that's the gist of it. Okay, 
So for instance, uh, you get this whole, you're gonna redo your bathroom, okay? Um, you can do a bunch of different things, but let's say that, uh, that maybe that you think the tub thing is gonna hold everything else up. Then, then getting that new tub in is the thing you probably ought to work on getting there as quick as possible. Because if it's gonna hold up the floors, the walls, painting, everything else, then you better get that sucker done first, okay? And you're like, well, there's other things I could do first. Yes, there are. And there may be even things you have to do before you take the tub out, like maybe rip some sheetrock off, tear the door out of the wall, things like this. But if that tub is what's gonna hold everything else up and or it is the, it's part of the longest path through this thing, we wanna get that done as soon as possible. Um, it's funny, I think some guys working on cars, this always comes back to me working on a car. Um, I wanna tear down and get to a certain point so that I can get the parts ordered. Getting sometimes getting parts ordered for something that's an older vehicle, and I just finished working on this one older truck. Getting the parts here takes forever, and then fi and finding them first of all online, and then getting them here takes forever. And so it's oftentimes, I just knowing that I know that that's going to be the problem. It's not necessarily finishing the task after that. It's getting the parts, finding them, and then getting them here is going to take forever. I need to tear down as quickly as I can, figure out what I need. And then I can get to the ordering and, the, and then sitting on my butt waiting for the shipping to happen. And, and, and maybe I'll end up out, I may end up running out of other things to do, but it's possible that while I'm waiting on that, I can go work on something else on the vehicle or a different vehicle altogether. So I'm not just sitting around twiddling my thumbs, okay? Um, that is the idea that if you plan out ahead of time, you're not gonna get to a situation where you've done everything else there is, and now you got nothing to do for, for four or five days while you're waiting for the shipping to happen, okay? And a lot of us, if you've had to do any planning at all, you already have done, in essence, this algorithm. But you never really thought through 100% how it works out. And so that's how we're going to work on this guy. Uh, I will show you all three of them. It's, they're really a lot of fun to do, I think. And my hope is, is that you'll see that when you're looking at this same processes, the same kind of processes go on, obviously, inside a computer. It's not a mistake. It's not a, it's not a uh, coincidence that they use the term processors um, when the things are being done and, and different different processes need to be completed it's not a mystery that they use that when obviously this sounds a lot like coding because it is obviously in relationship to coding as well um, but for the rest of us that don't do that on a daily basis thank god uh, i still think through things this way when i'm planning out what's going to happen down the road a ways uh, and so i hope that's i hope you kind of see the math behind that um, really not a ton of math going to get down here in terms of the math that you typically think about it. no integrals you know no disgusting algebra just nice and fun and logical kind of manipulations what you're going to see is the logic in this class is pretty much throughout the class it's not just going to be that little blurb of chapter two uh logically speaking you know this had to happen before this this had to happen before this why did you do it in this order well because and all those are pieces of logic that I want you to see. And that's also why, you know, when you program something wrong, the computer throws out an error at you. It's because it ran out of logic. You ran out of logic somewhere along the line. You've got, you're trying to do something that it's not ready to do yet. Or you're telling it to do something it's not ready to do yet. So we're going to be looking at that in the next video. Uh, we'll do quite a bit of scheduling in that regard. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you, I've got a picture here. Let me get it up on the screen real quick. Um, in regards to uh, a Hamiltonian circuit, and I think it's this one. Yes, it's this one. So let's download him. Cool. And, oh, fart. I downloaded him twice. Okay, here we go. So zoom me. Cool. So what I've got here is I've got some towns down south. Uh, I, took, I just took this out of a book because I was kind of too lazy to uh, to not do it out of a book. Hey, look, you can go from Atlanta to anywhere that's listed on this chart. Yep. Hey, I can go from Jacksonville or Jackson, Mississippi to anywhere on this thing that's listed here. Yep. Do I know how they're laid out? Yeah, more or less, but not really. Is it important? More or less, but not really. Excuse me, if you were the salesman who needed to go call on people, okay, 
let's think about this right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go make a graph. Um, we're gonna look at this deal here. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Cool. And I don't really care how you label them. It doesn't matter where they are necessarily. I think it's helpful if you know and you can list them out and so that Memphis is where it belongs relative to Jackson, because the way I just drew it's not true, but I don't care. Um, let's see where we're at. Jackson, Charlotte, Columbia. Charlotte, Columbia. Nashville, New Orleans, Orlando. And wait for it, Birmingham. Birmingham. Cool. Awesome. Now, if you were going to go and traipse around to these different places, what is referred to as the traveling salesman problem, and you're going to go to all these different places and you need to make it home. Now, clearly, you live in one of them. Okay. Now, what I could do is I could draw from each one of these guys this situation. Every single one of them would have that many lines coming off of it. What a disgusting mess. So when the numbers get large, when there gets to be such a ginormous pile here, what's oftentimes better, and, and so instead of what we refer to as the nearest neighbor algorithm, okay, which we talked about last time, we can do it a couple of different ways in that video. Uh, you can do this a couple of different ways. You could start in Atlanta. From Atlanta, who is the closest route? From Atlanta, the closest route is Birmingham. All right, cool. So Birmingham, 150, nice. Now, you can do this, you can go, all right, from Birmingham, who's the next closest route? Well, um, hey, look, it's Atlanta. Now I've already been there, you weirdo. So what's the next closest route? Uh, Nashville, 194, cool. Nashville, 194, okay. And then who's the next one? From Nashville, it's pretty clear that the next closest place is uh, Memphis, 209. Oh. All right. And you can keep going on this, and I'm going to keep going on this one all the way around. This will not necessarily be the shortest route. So we're going to do this a couple of different ways. I could do this nine different times, starting in Atlanta, go all the way around, starting in Orlando, go all the way around. So New Orleans go all the way around and continue doing this. I'm just going to do it just for Atlanta this first time. And then uh, if you watch the video, you'll see a bunch more examples of that. But then also what I want to do is what I leave off, Memphis. Um, I'm also going to show you another algorithm today as well. So coming down the list, 209, 213 to Jackson. Have I been to Jackson yet? Nope, 213 to Jackson. Nice. Once I'm in Jackson, the next closest place is New Orleans, 206, which totally looks like it. Oop, yeah, that's right. Now, from New Orleans, I really only have Charlotte, Columbia, and Orlando left. So from New Orleans, I have Charlotte, which is 700, Columbia, which is 689, and Orlando, which is 648. I guess we'll go to Orlando next. 648, <laughs> nice. Now from Orlando, Charlotte or Columbia, should be Columbia, right? So from Orlando, 437 to 437. Then I have to go to Charlotte, obviously, because I need to make the entire trip. So from Columbia to Charlotte is 94. And I gotta get back to Atlanta, obviously. That's where I live. Or maybe I it's not even if I not if I live there or not. It has to do with I need to complete the circuit. And so we're from Columbia to Atlanta is 214. Okay, so let me add that up for us real quick. So I've got uh, 213, 214, 150, 206. 48, 
Oops. So 2,365 miles. So we went from Atlanta, Birmingham, and you'll see me do this on the on the video. I write I like to write it like this, but sometimes it's easier if you have a giant one to draw and draw the picture out ahead of time. From Nashville, we went to Memphis. Okay, and then we went to Jackson. And then 206 to New Orleans. And then to Orlando. Columbia, Charlotte, Atlanta, 214. Okay, so again, that's kind of how I like to draw them. And then my total was 2365. I would do the exact same thing, but I would do start at Birmingham, go all the way around and finish at Birmingham. It may be bigger than this, it may be less than that, it may be the same as that. I would do the same thing for Nashville, and so on and so on and so on. But you're like, Jay, I don't live in Nashville, I live in Atlanta. That's cool, I'm glad you said that. Because what would happen if I looked at this thing? This is just a circuit, a circle, if you will. It doesn't really matter where in the circle you start, you can start here and go all the way around the circle. How far is it? The same as if you started here and gone all the way around, you with me? So it makes no difference if I start in Atlanta and finish in Atlanta, yeah, I could have started at Orlando and gone this direction and I got back around. It still would have been 2,365 miles. And so that's what's referred to as the nearest neighbor algorithm. You go to the next closest place each time. Okay. Again, it's an algorithm, which means it's not necessarily perfect. It just simply means that I've connected everybody. Okay. It is just a way of looking at it. Another one is sometimes used is what's referred to as the cheapest link algorithm. It is not my favorite. I find this one a little off-putting because you end up building it a piece at a time. And it's kind of annoying, but let me demonstrate. When I go on this thing, what is the shortest route on this entire thing? Now, by the way, I find it helpful when I said I do. Why is that not writing? Now let's do this. Uh, no, maybe let's do this. Where's my snipper tool? Snipper. Snipping. That is not what I wanted at all. There it is. Gotcha. All right. Well, I was hoping to do is put this baby in my, oh, just a minute. Rats. Copy. Copy. Cool. Paste. I'll put it in here and then I'll come back to you. I didn't forget about you. Uh, zoom or uni. There we are. Cool. All right. So there we are. So then when you look at this guy here, you're like, oh, cool. What is the shortest route on this whole thing? Or the shortest, the shortest route or the shortest distance on any of these guys? Well, it's 94, I believe. Is that right? So I think 94 is the shortest one. Well, where does that go between? It goes between Columbia and Charlotte. So I'm just going to start by putting this edge on Columbia and Charlotte, 94. What I was going to say was you can cross one half of the graph off because that's just a repeat up there. So what I've done is I've gotten rid of that, that 94 for Charlotte. I've used it already. Oh, that's cool. What's the next shortest link that you see up here? This takes a while, so bear with me here. 150. Oh, look at that. Birmingham to Atlanta. Birmingham. Atlanta, 150. Hey, look at that, Jay. We're using two of the same ones we used last time. I'm not shocked by this, not even a little bit. All right, 94 is probably gonna show up on every single one of them. It's fairly close. If you are in Charlotte, you're probably, and you have to go to Columbia, or you're in Columbia and you have to go to Charlotte, that's probably where you're gonna go next because it's close, all right? Um, the next shortest one, 209, I think, 206, 206. 194, 194, 194. So we need it is from Birmingham to Nashville. Now, this is the first time it happened. Birmingham to Nash. 
will. I have used Birmingham. I can no longer use Birmingham. Are you with me? So if it's me, I'm getting rid of all the Birminghams at this point because I have a road into Birmingham and I have me going out of Birmingham and that is it. I will never go back there again. It's not because I hate the place. I just, I've never been, I've already been there. Okay. So let's go. What's next? After the 194, then I think it's 206. Is that what I said? 206? Yes. So that's New Orleans and Jackson. New Orleans and Jackson I do not have. So I'm going to add them here and here. For those of you who are, I'm not perfectionistic, but this bothers me a little bit to see like Jackson, Mississippi, like the same latitude as New Orleans. If that bothers you, feel free to draw it however you like. But just pretend you don't know what's going on. It makes your life a little bit easier, I think, sometimes. 209 is Nashville to Memphis. So Nashville, I've already used. Memphis, I have not used. So here's Memphis. Okay. And you notice that Nashville has now been completely used up. Does that make sense? I have gone, oh, that's, darn it, that's Memphis, you dope. And where's the other Nashville? The other Nashvilles right here. I got rid of all my Nashvilles because I've gone there and I've come out of there, okay? All right, who's next? Uh, 213, is that next, I guess? 213 is Memphis to Jackson, cool. 213, that's Memphis to Jackson. So now I'm done with Memphis, is that true? Yep, and I'm done with Jackson. And again, this is just me keeping track, it makes my life easier, okay? I think anyways, maybe not for you, but for me it does. Uh, 214 is next, that's Columbia to Atlanta. So here's Columbia to Atlanta, that's 214. Now I've used Columbia and Atlanta completely. And Columbia is there and here. You're like, well, I only have a few places left. That's right, you do. So notice that Orlando, is Orlando on here yet? Orlando is not on here yet, okay? Uh, is New Orleans on here or New Orleans on here once? So let's see what's gonna happen here, okay? So, um, correct. Nice. Okay, so what's going to have to happen then? So the ones that are left, the next shortest one is, oh, I already in the Charlotte too, haven't I? Good for me. No way. Oh, yeah, but I used that 94 already, so it's gone already. Cool. So I'm left with, really, if you look at it, this guy here, this one here, and this one here, okay? So who's next shortest? 534, that's Orlando to Charlotte. So Orlando, Orlando. 534. I know Orlando is clear over here in Texas now. That's kind of weird too. It's going to weird me out too. Notice that everything has been connected now except for where? This guy. Okay. And where is that guy? Well, that guy right there is Orlando to um, Orlando to New Orleans, which is 648. Okay. And now I have made myself using the cheapest link algorithm. I've also made myself a graph. I don't know. Some people like that one better. That one, it's not my favorite. I find it annoying to have to keep coming back up to the table and going, all right, well, who's the smallest one? Because I am not much of a perfectionist and I keep, I will miss things and I'll throw myself off. Okay. So if it's me personally, I kind of like doing the nearest neighbor algorithm because if I'm in Charlotte, I look down Charlotte's column, I find the next closest place. If I'm in New Orleans, I look down New Orleans column. And to me, that's my favorite way of doing it. Okay. Uh, but regardless, that's how you go about it. This is what's called, again, the traveling salesman problem. Okay. You're trying to solve the traveling salesman problem. You're trying to give him a circuit. This happens to be a Hamiltonian circuit. Hamiltonian, that is the idea that you are going from destination to destination. Uh, we want to minimize the distance between the destinations. Okay. Euler, it's all about the destination. And again, you'll see that in the video. It's all about the destination. It's for instance, if you're street sweeping, okay, you have to go up and down every street. Can I miss one? Not and do your job. No, you can't. Uh, the postman, you know, yes, must go up and down every street. I guess if there's a let that there's a box on, sure. Does the FedEx guy have to go on every street? No, he doesn't. Because why? Because not everybody gets a package today. So today he may come down my street, 
and he might stop at my house or he might stop at my neighbor's or he might not even come down this street at all some days because it's always a guy going from this house to this house to this house to this house to this house or business or whatever dropping off packages and so we're going to be looking at those guys clearly uh, the whole point of this is so the guy is not doubling back. Hey, he's in Orlando. Oh, crap. I forgot to go back to Memphis. Oh, now I got to go down to Charlotte. Now I got to come back over to New Orleans. That's ludicrous. Okay. And so the idea of logistics, the idea of anything, laying things out ahead of time, that is what this stuff is so important for, graph theory. Okay. In our, in our daily, actual, you know, daily lives sorts of things. Okay. Uh, personally, I talk about this in the video a little bit, and I'll do some more with it as well. Um, the, for you running errands, this makes perfect sense if um, you are uh, like it's on a Saturday afternoon and there's no hurry to run the errands. In other words, um, then you, you do you want to minimize time, and that's great, or distance perhaps, whatever is easier for you. If you live in Portland, Beaverton area, then it's probably more about minimizing time, how much time you're wasting driving from A to B because of Highway 26 being clock, you know, clogged up. Okay. Uh, if you're out here where I live, or if you know you're somewhere else, small town America, it's probably more about minimizing uh, distance because distance and time are a lot more closely related than they are in a big city. In a big city, you can be three miles away. It might take you an hour and a half to get there versus if you went to this other place, it wouldn't take that long at all. So it's a, again, it's just a way of thinking about things um, and kind of seeing some of the math. This is truly math. Graph theory is a branch of mathematics that again, we don't always get to see, but it's stuff that we do all the time. Uh, again, this does not really cover it. If you have to, uh, it's a Monday morning, you drop the kids off to school and you gotta get some dry cleaning and get some groceries and so forth, and you have to go to work, clearly there's a schedule to be kept there. So the way we're looking at this is as is, 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 is if it's the independent of time, okay? There's no, there's no time frame on this at all. If there was a time component to it, obviously it doesn't really work to not drop the kids off by eight or whatever. And you showing up at you know two in the afternoon at work because that's when it's convenient to you doesn't really doesn't really float the boat most of the time with most bosses. So you clearly have to be a certain place at a certain times. So you know you're gonna have to probably end up doing a lot of double back in that situation. So I like to think of it for me running errands, but it has to be on a day when I don't really care about any time constraints or anything. Uh, but even if there wasn't time constraints, sometimes there is just a the idea. I use ice cream a lot, but you wouldn't buy ice cream and all the rest of your groceries and then do a bunch of running around you know, for another couple hours before you go home, that's stupid. So clearly you're gonna wait till, you know, obviously to pick that up last. There are some things that, again, logic covers this entire class. You'll see as we go along, okay? So um, I think that's about all I wanted to talk about today. I hope that, you know, when you look at this stuff, you find it a little bit fun and interesting. It's, I mean, I love doing calculus as much as the next guy. And, if I like algebra more than the next guy, and I'm weird that way, but um, there are days when I really like to just sit down and do some other math that is not necessarily math that we do all the time, and kind of think about things. Why do we do it this way? Also, then don't be hard on yourself if you're a person who's kind of a scatterbrain person, who, who then you realize, oh, boy, I've wasted so much time, or whatever scheduling, whatever. Just be be happy that you've learned a new tool. Maybe you can apply some of it to your daily lives. One of the projects will be in regard to some scheduling. Um, so just so you know, in the future, that's the one, one of the ones that I will use as a scheduling thing. Um, and kind of go from there. So questions, comments? No. Yep. Nope. Nope. I thought you were gonna ask go. a question. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> so see you next Wednesday. Okie dokie. All right. All right. Good week. See ya. Bye.